Welcome back to Biz Today. As always, we get an expert in studio to talk to us about issues or topics that you as a business owner always have an interest in. Or it's important to your business, but you may not necessarily understand it. Now, there are lots of things to talk about, and one of them is intellectual property rights. Do you know what that is? Well, we've got Vishen Pillay in studio. He's a partner at Adams & Adams, which is the largest intellectual property rights law firm in Africa. It's going to be an interesting conversation, so get your notebook out and let's see what he has to tell us. Vishen, welcome to Biz Today. It's lovely to have you in the studio. Thanks, Nez. It's great to be here. Okay, excellent. So, intellectual property rights is uh, something that small business owners or generally business owners may not necessarily understand, they know the term, mm -hmm. but it's this massive thing that you, you know about and then you have ideas and innovation. So we know those things. Mm -hmm. How, so can you help us define IP? Okay. Well, look, intellectual property or, or IP as we, we refer to it is, is an umbrella term used to uh, describe a various a bouquet of rights basically. So yeah. it's patents, trademarks, copyright and registered designs. Uh -huh. And those essentially are legal instruments that are used to protect the fruits of one's intellect. And that's pretty much what it is. Oh, so you mentioned copyright, trademarks, patents, and registered designs, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so viewers, you, you heard those four. Now we want to understand what they are exactly. So can you help us go through them and understand what they are, each of them? Of course. Well, patents uh, essentially is a, is a legal instrument used to protect an invention. And how, what an invention basically is, is something that has never been done before. It's, it's a world first and it's not obvious of existing technologies. So if you come up with a great idea and it meets those requirements, you ideally want to get a patent to protect it. And the patent is pretty much the only, re the only way you can, you can probably protect it. The trademarks uh, is another form of intellectual property. Uh, trademarks, you can register it, uh, like the patent, or you could have common law rights, meaning that you, you don't register it, where you'd have, um, uh, you know, you, you put a TM next to your, your brand hmm. or your name, etc. And what a trademark does is protects your, your logo, your, your brand, your name of your company or your name of your business. And the, the requirements in order to be registrable as a trademark is that a, a trademark needs to be capable of being distinguishing of, or basically capable of distinguishing your goods and services from those of your competitors. Okay. Um, and copyright is, a, is another form of intellectual property. Copyright, unlike trademarks and patents, there is no formal registration of copyright in South right. Africa. Uh, in copyright, you, the only thing that can be registered in South Africa is films. So we often think of copyright as a tool used to protect literary, artistic, dramatic works, etc. And it's an automatic right that comes into existence as soon as one of those acts are done. So as soon as you write a book, you automatically have copyright in that work. You produce something and you automatically have that Yes, copyright. you automatically sounds have Sounds a bit tricky though. It, it sounds very tricky. That's why you need to keep very accurate records in, in order to, to basically assert your copyright, uh, that your copyright vests in your, in your work. Okay. So we, we, we tell clients to... Uh, if you write a book, you know, email it through to yourself or get it stamped with uh, a stamp from a, a commission of oaths just to show... Like a time stamp. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. You know, you want that time stamp to show third parties that, look, on this date and time, you had copyright vesting in that work. Mm -hmm. And all you do there is that you put the C with the circle around it and you put your name and comma the date just to alert third parties that you have copyright in that work. It's incredible. I didn't know that. I thought you ha actually had to register to have the little C with the circle. Around. Oh, no, no, no. Um, that's uh, so for, for registered designs, I mean, not, sorry, for trademarks, you get the, uh, you know, like I mentioned, you get the common law rights where you just put the TM. Yeah. But when you file a trademark and you get a granted trademark or a registered trademark, that's when you can put the R with the circle around it. And that's the only time that you can actually do that. Okay. Um, and the last form of intellectual property is going to be registered designs. Designs. Now, registered designs is a, is a form of, of IP used to protect the appearance of a particular article. So it could be to protect a, a shape of a vehicle, it could be to protect the, the shape of a chair. Yeah. So it's basically the appearance of, of articles. And you know, the, there's two types of registered designs in South Africa. There's aesthetic designs and there's functional designs. Aesthetic designs are for articles that um, are, you know, have features that are judged solely by the eye yeah. and functional designs are for articles that are, have a, a shape or pattern configuration etc that are necessitated by the function that it's going to be performing or the article is going to be performing. So essentially those four forms of intellectual property are the main ones. There are softer forms of intellectual property like know-how. Uh, so, for instance, if you knew how to do something or, uh, or maybe the secret formula for Coca-Cola, 
uh, that would be know-how and uh, and be kept a trade secret essentially. So yeah. you'd have be regulated by way of cop for, by way of contracts, etc. And that's that's basically it in a nutshell. Excellent. So we we went through trademarks, copyrights, patents, and registered designs. Yeah. And they all have their own form of registration yeah. process, uh, a certain cost attached to it. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that copyright doesn't have to be registered. Yeah. Yeah. So in those instances, why would an inventor or a person came up with some fabulous idea go and register this? The value to them or the benefit to them, how would it serve them? And why do you think it's so important? I mean, it's a mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar industry globally, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Why, how does it serve the person who holds that right? Mm -hmm. Well, look, it has, it's, it's twofold, um, or it could be more folds, but uh, the ways that I look at it is that firstly, it's the, um, the value that, the defensive value of having those forms of registered intellectual property. Yeah. So you actually want to be able to defend yourself against third parties that are, are doing something the same as you or calling their companies and their brands something that you're calling yours. Okay. So the defensibility of having a registered intellectual property is always the main benefit. Uh, secondary benefits are, of course, the, the, the licensing of intellectual property. So, for instance, if you wanted to, you came up with a great invention, but you don't have the means or you don't have the, even the, uh, you don't want to take it forward to market, what you would basically then do is you can license it to a third party to actually manufacture and use this, uh, this great idea that you came up with or this uh -huh. great invention that you came up with. So, it has those sorts of main benefits, um, and which is, of course, of commercial value at the end of the day. Um, if you, you know, people don't buy ideas, I always say, people buy tangible things that they can, they can uh, protect. So if you come up with a great product, um, if you want to sell this concept away to somebody else, you ideally want to have a patent around that product so you can sell that patent. Otherwise, there's really nothing tying you to that organization to, to actually go out into the public with that product. And to obviously be able to benefit from that in the, in the first instance. Exactly, yeah. So uh, now people are wondering, okay, this amazing um, intellectual property rights that I can secure so that I can m benefit entirely, that mm -hmm. you know, the maximum from this idea, invention, product, service, yep. whatever it could be. At which point in a business's life does it take that step? How do they know? How mm -hmm. do I know when to do that? Okay. Well, look, it's, it's often the case with patents that you have to actually file a patent application before you release a product to the public. Mm. As soon as you release a product to the public, you destroy the novelty requirement of patentability and you can't go back and get patent protection. So ideally, as soon as you come up with this great idea or you, know, you come up with a great invention, rather pick up the phone and give a, a patent attorney a call just to find out whether you can protect it and, and the steps, etc., associated with it. Trademarks, it's, it's ideal that before you embark on a massive marketing campaign, etc., and before you roll out, uh, you know, massive amounts of money on on the, on, on the branding, yeah, you'd rather do a trademark search to firstly find out if your if your name of your or your brand it's actually is actually real. It, oh no, it's it's actually available to the public to That's use, right. or available to you to use. Yeah. Um, the last thing you want to do is spend you know tons of money on a on a branding campaign, and then all of a sudden you get a slap on your wrist saying, "I'm sorry, you can't use that brand because you know somebody else owns the trademark to mm. it or owns the trademark for it." So that's why we, we suggest that rather do it before you actually do massive amounts of marketing. Um, you do have common law rights, like I mentioned, with trademarks, where you put the TM next to your name. The difficulty with that is that it's, it's, it's rights that are available to you if you have a reputation in that particular mark. Okay. So meaning that you, if, if you come up with a great brand in KZN and somebody in the Cape decides to use it, you'd actually have to prove to the court that you have a reputation in the Cape, which can be expensive because you need to get marketing and advertising companies uh, you know, to, to do that. And so it, it, it is sort of that's, um, it, it can be quite, uh, quite costly to do that. Copyright, you'd need to, um, it's, it's automatically generated right, so there's no registration, you don't have to worry about it. And registered designs, similar requirements for, uh, as, a uh, as patents, you need to, to file before you launch to the public. But the benefit in South Africa is that we do have a six month window period where you can still file a registered design after launching your great product uh, to, to the market. So that's different from a patent where yeah. if you launch, then you, you, you not can't. qualify to apply for a patent. That's correct, yeah. Okay. So I mean, you mentioned earlier, you know, we were chatting off, off air that you enjoyed, um, you know, fashion, you enjoyed shoes. Yeah. If you come up with a great shoe, for instance, a shoe design, you can launch that design uh, to the public and you can see what happens, see if the market responds to it and within that six month period you file a registered design to stop third parties basically copying that shoe verbatim. Hmm, interesting. So uh, now, Pishen, we are talking in a South African context, of course. Mm -hmm. Would the rights that we apply for 
here in, in South African uh, law applied in this country and how does it affect us globally if we wanted to move to other markets? Mm -hmm. Well, most forms of intellectual property are territorial in nature. Mm. So for instance, uh, a patent, you'd, you'd have to, uh, we'll take patents as an example, Patents need to be filed in different countries if you actually want to enforce your patents. In that those sounds countries. very costly. It is very costly. So, but you know, then again, you need to be generating the revenue from your products and your business to, to justify. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's it's a it's a business call. So, it it is expensive because you'd have to file it in each jurisdiction. But the benefit is is that especially when it comes to patents and registered designs, you you do have a leeway in which you can file these these uh, even trademarks as well. You can file trademarks uh, and, and patents, etc., within a specific time period um, after public launch. So, for um, for instance, for uh, patents, you'd file a patent application in South Africa, mm. something which we call a provisional patent application. It secures your rights to the invention for a period of 12 months worldwide. So, you can you know put a patent number on your product, say it's patent pending, and roll it out internationally and see what the markets are you know, like. You know, so, if a product is gets taken up in the US, you can uh, you can file a patent within that 12 months. And there's ways and mechanisms of extending that 12 month period as well. Registered designs, you have six months in which to file in other countries of interest. Trademarks, you don't really have a set time frame, but in order to, to get registered trademarks for uh, your particular brand, etc., uh, you'd ideally want to file it as soon as possible in order to, to be able to, to claim the benefit of having registered trademarks in those jurisdictions. Okay. My question is, because mm -hmm. I understood all the others, which seem quite um, large by nature mm -hmm. in terms of the idea of the invention of the product that you're rolling out in. Obviously, it's a, on a much larger scale. Copyright seems to be the simplest of them. Mm -hmm. Well, look, if that makes sense. <laughs> it, it is from a registration point of view, but the difficulty with copyright is from an enforceability point of view because mm. because it's not registered. It's more difficult for, um, for for to prove that you actually own the copyright. You'd have to prove the chain of, of entitlement to that copyright. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, if you are employed as a uh, as a photographer. Uh, you know who owns the copyright then, and or if you are employed as a software developer, who owns the copyright? So I'll give you an example. If you come up with a great idea for an app, and you get as an external consultant a software developer to code this app up for you, you actually don't own that copyright in that app. It's the actual software developer. It's the person that physically writes the code. Shane, before you uh, leave us, because there's so much to talk about. <laughs> in terms of intellectual property rights, and we haven't even scratched the surface, I'm sure. No, we haven't. Yeah. So we've got to get you back in the studio to talk more and to go thoroughly through each type of right, yeah. uh, and you know, their expiration and how they extend globally and those type of things. Mm -hmm. But before you leave us, can you give our viewers a little bit of advice on what to consider briefly before they move ahead in the stage of applying for intellectual property right? Mm -hmm. Well, look, the, the first step is that as soon as you've got a great idea or a great invention or whatever it is, or great brand, rather consult with uh, an IP attorney to get at, some, at least basic advice in terms of where to go and how to protect yourself. Mm. Don't speak to anyone and don't disclose an invention publicly uh, without a non-disclosure agreement or a confidentiality agreement in place so that you at least are uh, ring fencing that particular disclosure from, uh, from a confidentiality point of view. Uh, and then, you know, when you consult with your, your IP attorney, they would be able to give you the advice and the steps to, to take forward. But I would say accurate records is, is key and, and get yourself to an IP attorney to, to have a chat. Uh, most IP attorneys, including ourselves, we do provide uh, free consultations to uh, startups. And, you know, by all means, make use of that. You know, it's, it, it's available to you. So that's what I would recommend. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us in Biz today. We've had such a brief conversation about intellectual property rights and it's something that businesses really need to know. They need to understand this so that they can take their business to the next level, I suppose. Of course, yeah. Wonderful. We'll have you back in the studio soon, I'm sure. Thanks, Nes. Excellent. So that was Vishen Pillay joining us from, he's a partner at Adams & Adams, in the largest intellectual property rights law firm in Africa. And as you heard, they provide free consultation to small businesses who want to explore the possibility of obtaining an intellectual property right. So go ahead and take up their advice. I mean, it's only going to make your business better. Thanks for joining us in Biz today. That's it for the show. We hope you enjoyed it. And as always, remember that your business is your business. So take an active interest in it and do everything you need to do to take it to the next level. We will be back next week with yet another successful entrepreneur and an expert in studio. Goodbye. <laughs>